Well, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and thank you, Jesus. It's around that time right here on KAZ Radio where I have one of my most favorite shows, Perfecting Your Relationship with Jesus Christ, none other than Tony Allen. Take it away, Tony. Praise the Lord, wonderful, beautiful people of God. It is always a blessing to come before God's people and to share God's heart with his people. That is one of the greatest joy, my first joy, my primary joy, is just being able to share what's on the heart of God. So welcome, everyone, to another broadcast of perfecting our relationship with our wonderful, awesome Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, we have been talking about um, what happens what happens when you get saved? Is that all to this awesome journey, this awesome walk with our Lord and Savior? And last week we said, no, there is definitely more to our walk, to our journey with, to our, in our life with Jesus. So today we're going to pick up from where we left off last week because God wants his people to know that once you give your life to him, th that's just the beginning. And there is so much more to him and so much more that he wants us to experience in this Christian walk. So before we get started and um and open up our hearts to hear what God wants to share with us, well, let's open up in a word of prayer. Father, I just come before you in the in the name of your precious son Jesus, thanking you for another opportunity to come before your people and to share your heart, to share what's on your mind, to let us know, yes, there is more to this Christian walk. Yes, there is more to you than what we are currently experiencing in our daily lives. So, Lord, every word that comes forth out of my mouth this day, I thank you, God, that it has been ordered, that it has been ordained, and that it has been anointed by your your Holy Spirit. Therefore, we know that it is going to fall on good ground and it is going to produce fruit after its own kind, which is you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray and I thank you for what you're about to share with us this day. Amen and amen. Well, welcome, 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 welcome. As we continue our journey in understanding and getting to know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ better, getting to know him beyond what we think, beyond that uh, initial introduction to him when we give our life to him. Yes, there is more to know in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That, As we said last week, when we go up to that altar or whomever leads you to the Lord, when you say that uh, repentance prayer, that's just the beginning to a lifelong process, to a lifelong, lifelong journey with Jesus Christ. The ultimate goal, God wants all of us, every believer to know that the ultimate goal in our salvation walk, number one, is, is becoming more and more like Jesus. That is God's intent and that is God's desire for us is to become more and more like Jesus. And number two, the reward, the ultimate reward is getting to see our Savior face to face one day when this journey is over here on earth. So, yes, there is more to getting to know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we look as we look in the book of Acts, which we're not going to go to today, but in your time, I do encourage you to spend time in the book of Acts so that you can see the beginning of the first believers and see how they moved in the spirit of the Lord and how they changed the, traje the trajectory of the world because of their relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's what we want to do in this season. We want to learn how to move mightily by the Spirit of the Lord so we can change the, traje the, the trajectory of, and the direction of our society. And Christ, Christians, that name originated from the first believers in Antioch because they were Christ-like, they followed Christ, they looked like Christ. They talked like Christ. They were so empowered by the Holy Spirit that it changed that society at that time. And what's so interesting is the society back then, the culture back then, besides the Jews, it was a culture full of witchcraft, uh, black magic, and demonic activity. So imagine the power of God moving through those first believers, how strong that power had to be to, come, to transform to transform a society from paganism, from witchcraft, from black magic to following Christ. That's what he wants to do with us today. Christian, Christ-like, following in his footsteps, speaking like him, talking like him, 
Hearing from heaven, as I always say on many of my broadcasts, we need to have our ears attuned to the throne so that we can hear what God is saying to us so that we can release that in history. Because believers, once you get saved, once you give your life to the Lord, you are now the legal, and I want you to catch this, you are the legal authority for God to release, to bring down heaven, to bring down God's glory, to bring down God's blessings, to bring down God's promises, to bring down God's viewpoint, to bring down God's will into a world that does not know him. And that's what Matthew 16, 16, 18, when Jesus was uh, talking with the disciples in Matthew 16, 18, that's basically what he was conveying to them. When he asked, when he asked them, who do men say that I am? And we see that Peter said, you are the Christ, you are the son of the living God. And I'm summarizing this, but once again, I encourage you to take a moment to search the scriptures, read Matthew 16, uh, 16. Matthew chapter 16, verses 16 through 20. And you will see the whole, uh, the entirety of this, of this uh, story where his disciples, where Peter came forth. And then he told Peter, uh, that has not been revealed unto you by flesh and blood, but by my father. And upon this rock, I shall build my church. And that rock is Jesus Christ. And then he goes on to tell us that he has given unto us the keys to the kingdom and whatsoever we shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever we shall uh, release on earth shall be released in heaven. A couple of broadcasts back when we were identifying who Jesus Christ was and we said that Jesus Christ, and I'm saying it again, Jesus Christ is God. And because Jesus Christ is God, he legally, he legally, we talked about how he legally made entrance into our society through the birth canal of a woman. Therefore, he is legally here, unlike demonic spirits, which are illegally here. So we, because he dwell within our spirit, we are his legal authority to show the world his perspective and his viewpoint. When he came to dwell within our spirit in um, seed form, we took on the divine nature of a holy God. We took on a divine nature of the God that created you, the God that created me. And it's in seed form with the full potential to grow and to develop, to, to produce the fruit that God has called us to produce. But it, but it requires something from you and I. It requires that you and I um, create an atmosphere, create an environment so that that so that that seed can grow within us. So the the, the problem with many of us is that we have not learned how to release or to activate the full the power or the viewpoint of God so that we can release it to a generation that do not know him. And that's what we started talking about last week. Yes, there is more, but we have to learn how to to nurture, to develop, to grow that seed that is within us. We talked about one of the ways was to read the word of God, one of the ways to develop our prayer life, surround yourself with light believers. We talked about um, going, getting yourself established and rooted in a church so that you can continue so that you can continue to grow, avail yourself to Bible study so that you can continually be hearing the word of God. God, that's how that seed is going to grow. We have to set an atmosphere. We have to create an environment so that it can grow. And as I say many times that Jesus Christ left us in this world, he did not take us out of the world. He left us in the world to be that light, to be the salt of the earth, to, to, to um, point men unto him. We are the salt of the world. And what does salt do? Salt create a thirst. It is our responsibility, beloved, to create a thirst in people to desire to want our, our wonderful, wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, God knows that we live in a perverse, evil world, but he did not leave us powerless. He did not leave us defenseless. He did not leave us comfort, comfortless, and he did not leave us with a help, without a helper. He gave us the Holy Spirit. We said last week, when you 
when you sincerely give your life to the Lord, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And one of the roles of the Holy Spirit is to help us, to teach us, to guide us, to help us live a righteous, acceptable, so, uh, acceptable, sober, holy life unto the Father in this ungodly world, reflecting his glory, reflecting his love, reflecting his peace, reflecting his kindness, reflecting his patience to mankind. Yes, we all know that Jesus loves us. And, and, and we said before, if anything come to you and tell you that he does not love you, that is a lie from Satan. You rebuke that. So the issue that we're going to talk about from this day forward is not going to be that it's not going to be rather not God loves us or Jesus loves us because he does. And if you hear anything different, rebuke it. We're going to talk about do we love him? That's the question on the table today. Do you love him? Do I love him? Am I committed to him? Because we know that he loves us and we know that he is committed to us. And um, one scripture that I do want to give you that talks about our life, uh, the helper of the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit has come to help us is in Titus 2.12. Titus 2.12. That's the scripture that you could go to, you can read, and you will be able to see how the Holy Spirit, it, it, it talks about how the Holy Spirit teaches us and he guides us to live in this world uh, obedient unto the Lord. God has given us standards to live by. We do not live by the standards of the world. The world do not set the standards for how we are to live. When you come to Christ, you are a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away. You have been translated from the kingdom of darkness unto the kingdom of light. We have a new king, and his name is Jesus Christ, and we and we live according to his rules, according to his precept, according to his word. It does not matter what what. Uh, what the law, what the world is doing, if it does not line up with the word of God, that is not the direction that we should be going in believers. So to start our lesson today, which we did start last week in Romans 12.1, we're going to pick back up there in Romans 12.1 because the Holy Spirit wants to highlight some things to us as to when we come to Christ, the first thing that we need to be doing is, number one, not conforming to the world. Because we are no longer part of the world. We have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness. We are now in his marvelous light. We now have a new king. We now have a new way of living. And our goal from, this, from that moment forth should be abiding by the kingdom rules. The kingdom of God's rule. So that we can bring his kingdom perspective in history. So you could turn with me to your Bibles to Romans 12, 1, and we're going to begin reading Romans 12, 1 and 2. And we're going to just allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us, to walk us through what this scripture means to us. Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye, pre that ye, that ye present your, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I want to stop right there for one moment. And I want to just take a look at that word. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Number one, living sacrifice, that's an oxymoron within itself. Because as we all know, a sacrifice is something that is dead. But right here, he's telling us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. That means that we are to die dead daily unto him. If we want to have more of God revealed and manifest in our lives, we have to die daily to ourselves. That's how we present our bodies as a living sacrifice unto him. God wants to control us totally. He wants to control our spirit, mind, body, everything about us. The Holy Spirit wants to control. So therefore, in order to have him in total control, as we mentioned that word Lord last week, so that he can be Lord over us, we have to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. We have to die to our wills. We have to die to our plans. We have to die to our thoughts. We have to die to ourself, and we have to submit ourselves unto his will. And we saw that perfectly in the Garden of Gethsemane with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, not my will, but let thy will be done. That is our example. 
Because we see Jesus had a will, but he said, not my will, but thy will. So if our Lord and Savior can surrender his will to the will of the Father, how much more should we, be not, should, we be not do, should we not be doing the same thing? Surrendering our will, surrendering our desires, surrendering our thoughts unto him. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. That's what that means, dying to yourself. Let's go on to verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I love this. I want to go back and take a look at two words in here, conformed and transformed. And transformed. Conformed. And be not conformed. Oh, beloved, once we come to Jesus Christ, we are a new creature. And God is telling us, you are no longer to conform to the ways, to the, to the philosophies, to the thought process, to the way that this world behaves. Because this world is grad, no, rapidly moving away from the word of God. And that word conform, it means to be identical, to be on one accord. And to be in agreement. So God is telling us, do not be in agreement. Do not be identical. Do not be on one accord with the ways of this world. Amos 3.3, 3, you could write that scripture down as well. It says, how can two walk together unless they be in agreement? So if you're going to walk this Christian walk, with the Lord Jesus Christ, so that his power and his glory can be reflected through you, through me, to, um, to a world that does not know him, to a world that does not have hope. We cannot be conformed to the world. We cannot look like them. We cannot talk like them. We cannot think like them because we get our instructions and our directions from our home, which is of another kingdom, which is the kingdom of heaven, which has another, which, which King Jesus rule and reign. We cannot be conformed to this world. We cannot look like them. We cannot talk like them. We cannot act like them. If we want to transform them. If we want to let the Lord use us to transform them, if we want to be like the first century believers and turn this world upside down for Jesus Christ, that was one of the things that people saw in the first believers. They saw that they were different. They saw that they was offering something different. They saw that they were offering hope. And that's how they were able to, to change an entire society with the power of God dwelling within them because they did not conform. Actually, the world conformed to them. That's why you and I are sitting here today, because they yield themselves to the power of God so that the world will conform to them. To the, when I say them, I'm talking about the power that was, that was within them, and God wants to do that with you and I today. The second word I want to look at is transform. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. We talked about last week. Yes, we have to read our word, and that's how you're going to be transformed in your mind, by reading the word of God. Because now you are, adopt, you are adapting, you are adopting a new concept, new belief system, a new way of thinking. Because as we talked about in previous broadcasts, as you read the word of God, as you study the word of God, as you open up yourself, you are allowing Jesus, Jesus Christ to transform you into his image. Because in the previous broadcast, you remember we said that Jesus is the word of God. So as you read this word, you are now taking in more of him. And as you take in more of him, more of you will begin to die you will, begin, you will begin to see yourself desiring him more. You will begin to see yourself wanting to um, develop, develop a desire to live by his standards, to live by his rules, to live by his word. And it will not be forced. It will become natural because your nature, that divine nature that we talked about that's in you, is, is growing. So your nature now will become like Jesus. 
as we look at the word transform, transform, and I love this um, transform, it's, it's, I love the way the dictionary defines transform, which is so appropriate to what God wants to do with us. Transformation. It modified beliefs so actions become natural, thereby achieving the desired long-term results. Is that not what the Lord wants to do with us? He wants to modify our belief system because we're coming out of the world with that old man's belief system. God said, no, I want to modify that. I want to transform that. And it's so interesting that he used the word transform and not change because I'm going to tell you the difference between the two in the mo- in a moment. Transformation it does not require external influences to maintain. It just requires a shift, a foundational shift from within yourself. And that's what we have in Jesus when, when the Holy Spirit indwells our spirit. It does not require outside influences. It's the work within. God works from within our spirit. And that's what transformation does. It transform. It transform. From within, um, trans- transformation is, I love, and this one definition really stood out to me when it says that transformation, it implies a major change in form, nature, or function. To trans, to trans, oh, sorry about that. To trans, to trans, to transform something or someone means to change or convert it into something else. And is that not what our Lord and Savior Savior wants to do with us? He wants to transform us. He wants to convert us into his image. I love that. To modify, to, 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 uh, to a major change, a major change in nature or function. That's what happens to us when we come to the Lord Jesus, when we accept him as our Lord and Savior, there is a major change in our spirit. There is a major change in our nature. We take on the divine nature of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, of our Father. And in uh, uh, 1 Peter, it tells us that we were not born again by incorruptible seed, by uh, an imperishable seed, by a, a defiled seed. But we were born, I'm sorry, we were, we were not born again by corruptible or perishable or defiled seed. But we were born by a holy, a holy, a holy, a sacred seed, uncorruptible seed of our Father Jesus Christ. Our nature is changing and it's continue, it will continue to change as we continue to commit ourselves, devote ourselves, and spend time in the presence of our Lord and Savior. Um, the difference I was going to tell you the between change. Change is a temporary and usually requires maintenance and monitoring. God is not interested in changing us. He's interested in the long-term benefits. He's interested in the long-term transformation. He's not interested in just changing us so that we can go back to our old self. He's interested in transforming us into the image of his dear and precious son. It's like when you think about transformation, think about the butterfly and the caterpillar. Think about the caterpillar. It's a caterpillar at first. The caterpillar does not change into the butter, butter, butterfly. It transforms into the beautiful, vibrant butterfly. And what's interesting, what caused the transformation is a deletion a deletion, a deletion or um, a takeaway or subtraction of one of its particles or one of its constitution of one of a constitution that makes up that caterpillar. And that's what God wants to do with us. He wants to take away our old nature to transform us into his son. And when I, when I thought about that, and as the Holy Spirit dropped that in my spirit with the analogy with the butterfly and the caterpillar, I said that it makes perfect sense when you look at it in that perspective because God 
He don't want us to go. He don't want us going back to the way that we used to be. No, he wants us to continue to change, to move from glory to glory. That's the whole goal. That's the whole intent of our Christian walk. So as I go back to the beginning and what we said last week, is there more to this Christian walk? Yes, there's more to this Christian walk. God wants a total transformation. He wants us to be transformed by the renewing of our word, by the renewing of his word. And as we said last week, it's not just getting in the word and saying, okay, our word, I read a word a day, a word a day keeps the devil away. No, he wants not only for us to get into the word, he wants that word to get into us. He wants that word to abide in us. Because we talked about so many believers, so many of us, we know the word of God. We can quote that word from Genesis to Revelation. We know that word backwards and forward. But are we applying it to our lives? Are we seeing a total transformation? Are we seeing ourselves being transformed gradually from day to day, from week to week, from month to month? Are we still doing the same thing that we were doing last week, last month, last year? Yes, I know that it's not going to happen, and God knows that it's not going to happen overnight or all at once. It is a gradual process once you initially give your life to the Lord. But there need to be some steps taken in that direction as we continue to establish, maintain, and perfect our relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, to su- in summary, time always goes by so fast when we come here and share the heart of the Lord. But in summary, number one, is there more to our Christian walk? Yes, there is more to our Christian walk. There is more to God than, than any of us is experiencing right now. So whatever you are experiencing right now, there is more. I encourage you to spend some time with the Lord. I encourage you to seek him and to ask him to show you, to show you, the, to show you how you can draw close to him. Because the Bible tells us he who draw close unto God, God will draw close unto him. So I encourage you to ask God, Lord, how can I draw close to you? Lord, give me a hunger and a thirst for you so that I would desire you more than anything in this world. Lord, show me how to make you my Lord. Show me those areas in my life that I have hid, those areas that I may not even know that I have hid from you so that we can uproot them and bring them to the surface so that we can lay them at the blood of Jesus so that Jesus can become Lord over them so that I can be a conqueror over them so that I can reflect your glory to this world that needs you because this world needs Jesus. We see so much going on in this world today. We see the hurt, the pain, the devastation, the destruction. People are hopeless. But we as believers in Christ, we have the antidote. And I say this all the time. We have the answer to what the world needs, and that is Jesus. God wants us to be like the first century believers. He want want the people to see something in us that they will say, there's something different about you. You're offering something different. I want to have what you have because we have not conformed. We have not compromised with the world system. We don't care who made it law, who said it's a law. If God said it's an abomination and it's not a law, it's wrong. God want us to be uncompromising in this season. God want us to walk around and know his truth and proclaim his truth to a world that does not know it. We want to be like the first century church for Jesus Christ. For those of you who may not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to take this moment to offer him to you and to let you know that the Bible tells us that he who confessed with his mouth and believe in his heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he shall be saved. So I, offer, I, I encourage you to repeat these words after me if you want to come into the family of God. Father God, I acknowledge that Jesus Christ is your son and that you sent him to die for my sins. And because he died and you rose him on the third day, he shed his blood. I accept him as my Lord and Savior. 
I accept the redemptive work that he done for me on Calvary. And because his blood was shed for my sins, past, present, and future, he did not cover my sins. He removed them. I accept him into my life as my Lord and Savior. I ask you, Lord, to come into my life and to be my Savior and to be my Lord. If you said that prayer and you met and you meant that, you are now a child of God and you are on your way to perfecting your relationship with Jesus Christ. Be blessed, everyone, and God loves you. Amen.